Hello, great to have you with us uh, for, and welcome to Kings Anywhere. Uh, wherever you're listening, uh, you are very welcome. Uh, and thank you for, for joining us. And uh, we're really excited for what we're going to uh, listen to uh, shortly coming up. We have Jeff and Jane, who we are uh, interviewing, and uh, they are going to be talking to us about their experience of God. And uh, I believe get quite passionate, excited about that. So I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, please uh, put comments in. Uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, so uh, please feel free to, to put into the feed, uh, introduce yourself and make comments uh, as we go through. And we are going to now go over to having some prayer uh, before we go into our worship. And uh, really um, good to, to uh, just pray uh, through some of the, the uh, four spaces that you're going to hear about now as we go over to some prayer. So exciting stuff. So at King's Church, we gather in four spaces because, well, when Jesus was making disciples in those three years of public ministry, he had three very close friends, Peter, James, and John. And then he had 12 disciples that traveled with him and shared life. And then he had 72 of those guys impacted and they were sent out to make disciples. And then he also, well, he, he gathered crowds and saw some amazing things happen. So we're going to pray for those four spaces this morning in our lives. And so to start with, we're going to pray for those very close to us. So maybe just put in the comments the first initial of those, your loved ones, the ones closest to you who you are most intimately sharing life with. Let's just pray for those guys. Father, thank you for relationship. Thank you for family. Thank you for close friends. And as we share that really close relationship with people, I pray your blessing on relationships, on family life, on marriages, on friendships, that your peace and your well-being would flood them in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, at King's, we meet in that slightly bigger space of missional household or missional community. They're groups, often maybe just one or two families, all the way up to maybe groups of up to maybe 50 people, possibly. Those bigger groups where we're starting to reach into communities, networks, friendship groups, and those kinds of things. Maybe you could put in the comments section the name of your missional community or your missional household. And maybe let's just think about those guys for now. And let's pray for the people in the area where we work. Let's be praying for the people near where we live, those networks, those communities that we're meeting with. Jesus, thank you that you love people, that you are for people. That in these times now where many of our missional communities and households are meeting on Zoom, I pray that you'll help us to really feel that sense of community and of being one bigger family, that feeling of an extended family. God, for our workplaces, our schools, our colleges, our communities, our neighbourhoods, we pray that you will be working in power. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're also going to pray for our bases, for those uh, slightly smaller than the larger gathering spaces that we meet in right across our town. We're really looking forward to getting back to those and we just pray that those venues become available soon. We also pray that the venues themselves stay blessed, they stay safe, that the staff that work in those schools and those community centres stay healthy. And we're going to pray for our town, for this town of Warrington and the towns in the surrounding area, for people to be blessed, for people to know God's nearness at this time, and most important, for people to stay safe and healthy. Amen. So Jesus also ministered to uh, the crowds, those big spaces where everybody can gather. Uh, we just love that sense of space, uh, that sense of being gathered together, listening to worship uh, one another, praising God together. And um, this, as it, we're here at the Pyramid, as you can see, and I'm sure that many of you are looking forward to, to coming back here uh, and worshipping together. And so we're just going to pray uh, for our gathered spaces, those big spaces where we can encounter God uh, in those places. So, Lord, we just thank you that you are the one that is uh, our Lord, our Saviour. Lord, we thank you that in these places of um, being gathered, we can come and we can worship you. Lord, we can hear your word. Lord, we can encounter uh, your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I just pray uh, for the, the start uh, of us coming back, that you would give us courage. Lord, that you'd make us bold uh, in this time, Lord, that we would not uh, be hindered by fear in this season, God but that we would encounter you afresh, Lord, as we come together and as we gather, gather together again, Lord, uh, in this space at the Pyramid. Amen.
Good morning. It's great to be back um, with some more members of King's Church this morning. And I'm really delighted to welcome Jeff and Jane, please. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Great. Yeah, really good to see you two for, as well. How are you both? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Yeah, really yeah. enjoying life. Can we start with you, Jeff? And could you just share with us, first of all, why you think it's important um, to encounter the Holy Spirit as a follower of Jesus? Why is that really important part of your walk? Well, I think, first of all, Wendy, uh, Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away. In other words, uh, to his disciples said, it's better for you that I'm going away because I'm going to send another helper. And uh, if Jesus said it was better for me to have the Holy Spirit than to actually be with him, then I think it's it's up to me to really seek and to receive what Jesus promised, because he said he was going to be a helper, my helper. He was going to be my guide. He was going to teach me. He was going to empower me. He yeah. would produce fruit in my life, you know, the love, the joy, the peace, uh, the patience, the kindness. And, you know, as Jane would tell you, I need all of those things in abundance. <laughs> so, um, you know, and Christianity is not a self-help, actually. It's, it's putting ourselves in the place where we can be helped by the Holy Spirit. Right. So mm -hmm. it's very important to me that I line up with what Jesus said is best for me. Uh, and then, you know, in that time, in the 40 odd years that we sort of walked with him, that's that's been a key thing just to just to fulfill everything Jesus said. This is good for you. So that's yeah. why I think it's very important. Mm. Yeah, the good advice. And can you give us a kind of an idea of what, what encountering God, encountering the Holy Spirit might kind of look like, you know, in a broad picture of your work? What does it look like for you? Well, I think it it's very different for different people because clearly the Holy Spirit comes upon us as individuals. And I think as individuals, we are clearly different. We've been in places where we've been in major revival centers and just because you're in a huge meeting, there's this corporate sense of, of the presence of God and you feel something different there than you do when you're in the quiet of your own mm. quiet place, you know. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I, I seek to experience the presence of God and the, 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 the closeness of the Holy Spirit pretty well all of the time. I love that, you, you know, you're explaining there as well that, it's not just about those big wow experiences, but you know, you're you're looking to encounter Jesus on a, a daily basis in your quiet time, in uh, in your throughout your day. Is that that the, the picture that you're painting for us? It's those different things, really, different phases. One is the the major encounter of the burning bush. The other is the the sense of his presence all the time and every yeah. day as we're going through. But then the other is that intentional time when we put ourselves mm. aside to mm. seek him, like Jesus set himself aside to seek the Father. So, Jane, you know, your story is similar, isn't it, to Jeff's of, of, of um, you know, experiencing God and the Holy Spirit on a, on a regular pace, regular basis, sorry, in all different aspects, as Jeff has just explained. But would you be able to share with us uh, just briefly this morning of um, perhaps a standout experience of God that you can recall? Yes, I would love to. I obviously have a, a number, but um, one that, that does come to mind, which was standout, when I was a very, very new Christian, I mean, probably only become a Christian a few months previously, mm -hmm. three or four months previously, and I had no knowledge. No, It's extraordinary to think that you could grow up in this country, and I was now 30 plus, and I had no knowledge or understanding about the Bible, about Christianity before this. Um, and I was reading in my Bible and I read in Acts 2 about Pentecost. I was so excited about Pentecost, <laughs> even more so because I'd looked in my diary and two weeks further on, it was Pentecost Sunday. And I remember saying to some friends who were helping to sort of um, encourage us in our growth as Christians, I remember saying, oh, my goodness, it's Pentecost Sunday. You know, what's going to happen? 
<laughs> but of course, now I know that the Holy Spirit can break out any day of the year. Yeah. But I was like absolutely um, convinced that Pentecost Sunday, God was going to do something. Expectancy, and, wasn't it? Yeah, I was expectant. I was anticipating. And I went to church. Um, it was a, a small church on the Wirral. I went to church that Sunday thinking, what was God going to do? And to my amazement, during a worship song, um, suddenly into my head came a scripture um, and I, I looked it up. Um, it was Jeremiah. I think it was 14. I can't quite remember where it was now, but I looked it up and it was like, I mean, I didn't have a clue, really. I didn't understand it, but I began to cry. I became emotional. I knew God was saying something. And I turned to the, the guy sitting next to me was an elder who I greatly respected. And I, I said, you know, can you look at this, please? You know, and he took it and it was a word for the church. It was a powerful prophetic word, mm -hmm. a directional word for the church. Now, I didn't have a clue. But I had heard from God. And oh, my goodness, Wendy, that absolutely impacted me that the Holy Spirit, you know, if you if you are a believer, trusting God, obeying God, seeking to submit your life to God, if you are looking to him to lead you, then God will speak into your life at any moment, at any place. And he can he can impact other lives through you having ears to hear mm -hmm. you know god says you know you know seek seek me you know ah seek knock yeah. and expect to receive the holy spirit in in your journey with with god at that time um i love that you spoke about the expectancy as well but having having sort of encountered god then how did that um affect your walk with with god after you know receiving that word what was kind of the the impact on your journey going forward well, even more, I expected to hear from God yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I come to the word, I'm, I am I come with an expectancy. You know, God says, you know, that uh, he, he longs to, to show his love to us. He longs to reveal himself. Jeff has spoken about the Holy Spirit. He reveals Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, he speaks, the, the word of God is a love letter to us. Yeah. And, you know, I believe that when I pick up the word of God and I begin to read, the Holy Spirit is shining his light on that word and he will quicken it and make it what we call a rhema word, a quickened word, so that it, it touches you, it impacts you. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to impact us through the word of God, through our time. You know, when we were kayaking yesterday, you know, as you look at the mountains and the, the you know, the beautiful things around, the Holy Spirit can speak to you. He speaks to me in the garden. He speaks to me when I'm doing the washing up. He speaks to me at any moment because, you know, we need to tune our ears in. Um, yeah. That's what I believe. And uh, I mean, it, it just it just impacted me, I suppose, you know, in a wonderful way to just have more faith and believe yeah. his word that he wants to speak to me. Yeah. And I think, I think part of the problem that many of us have is that, you know, as we move on with it, we're expecting the burning bush experience all the time. Yeah. And if we don't get that, then we think God isn't speaking to us or mm. we'll not have an mm. encounter. Mm. But actually, if we're born again, then we are seated in heavenly places with Christ and we are in a place of encounter. Mm. And it's not that God doesn't come close to us, but he, he, he draws us close to him. And I think the greatest encounter we have is, you know, he has drawn close to us through coming mm, to mm, earth. Mm. And he calls us now to draw close to him. Yes. And mm. and we need to draw close to him. Yeah. We need to be with our best friend. We need to put time aside like Moses did in the tent of meeting. Mm. You know, and Joshua, who led the people in, he would go into the tent of meeting with Moses. And when Moses left, he would stay there because that's where he encountered God. Mm. And I find, you know, it's... It's one thing to be able to lead people out of darkness, but it takes people who know the encounter and the presence of God, like Joshua did, to take people into something. Yeah. You can't take people into what you've not experienced. Yeah. Yeah. And so for us, if we want to lead people into the presence of God, we need to encounter that. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the scripture in um, Isaiah 
30, verse 18, I read this morning. It says, but the Lord still waits for you yeah. to come to him so he can show you his love and compassion. And, you know, and I just want to encourage people, you know, that, that God is just longing to speak to us and to reveal mm. more of himself through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, that that is so encouraging. I love I love that you know you you sort of showing all those different aspects of how God, um, we how we can encounter God and in the still small voice and in the you know in the louder voice um, and all those aspects as you say, Jane, when you're kayaking and when you're in the garden, and uh, yeah, so so. Thank you so much for encouraging us today. It has been a real encouragement from you both. And um, I think that that word of, of being in expectant and drawing close to God is, is a real encouragement for us all as we go forward. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the Thank privilege. You. Bye. Bye bye. That was just fantastic, wasn't it, to hear uh, Jeff and Jane's. Uh, story and to hear about how the Holy Spirit is uh, he is God and he is um, an advocate he is our friend and he's, he's not just with us sort of in big event things but he's with us in our daily life uh, and he wants to speak to us and lead us and guide us and encourage us so thank you Jeff and Jane for that that was just so encouraging so just to give you uh, some announcements, some notices, uh, and uh, the first uh, notice is to just let you know we were hoping to meet uh, at the pyramid next week, but uh, we've we've taken the decision uh, just to postpone that uh, for under the present uh, circumstances. Uh, but don't get disheartened because next week uh, on our live stream we have uh, a guest which uh, is Helen Yousaf. And now Helen, uh, she, is, uh, she has a real prophetic ministry and she is part of Elim Sound. So we're really excited to welcome Helen uh, next week as part, of our, as part of our live stream. Also, some uh, other exciting news is that on the 31st of October, we are going to have a night light. Uh, what is that? you're asking me, well, uh, we're going to have a, an open air and uh, over at St. Greg's and uh, it's going to be really exciting for families and there's going to be lots of lights. And so that will uh, put that in your diary, uh, October the 31st. And um, we're excited for that at 5.30 p.m. Also uh, coming up is uh, Base Camp, which uh, is starting on a Monday evening uh, the 12th of October and if you would like to um, you're interested in journeying and getting to know about what we do here at King's if you're interested in missional communities base camp is the place for you and uh, so please uh, just send us uh, a, an email and contact us and we will uh, let you know uh, look out for the information about base camp we're going to come and uh, hear, listen to Mike, who's going to bring God's word to us now. And um, let's be expectant to receive uh, wherever we are, let to hear what God has to say to us as Mike brings God's word. So I'm just going to pray uh, before Mike uh, brings God's word. Lord, I, I just want to thank you that we've been hearing so much, Lord, that you are the God that comes alongside us, that, that you uh, Lord, want to encounter our lives. You want to bring transformation and Lord, you want to change us. And Lord, I just pray as we listen to Mike now, God, that you would, uh, Lord, take this opportunity, Lord, to um, let us see more of who you are. Let us see more of your character, Lord. And I just pray for those of us that are listening, that we really encounter you as we listen to Mike now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Today we are continuing our encounter series with a look at the power of the Holy Spirit. We have a value here at King's Church, which is value E, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And what that means is that we expect to, and we do see the power of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, at work, in us and through us. That's really important for our daily lives, 
but also that we see these occasions, these encounters where through the power of the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of God breaks in to the world through miracles, signs and wonders. You know, Jesus' whole ministry, the time that he spent on the earth as fully God and fully man, was filled with these power encounters. The Gospels are packed full of them. Then right before he ascends to heaven, he makes us this promise. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and in all Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We are promised the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, as with all promises of Jesus, it's fulfilled. Ten days later, the promise begins to fulfill on the day of Pentecost. All his disciples are gathered together in one place. Uh, when Acts 2 tells us this happens, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. There's this incredible encounter. They're filled with the Holy Spirit and immediately they head out. There's a crowd and Peter, one of the disciples, addresses them. He tells them all about who Jesus is. He tells them all about what Jesus has done. He tells them all the promises of Jesus. And the crowd is struck by this. The Bible says they're cut to the heart and they ask, what is it that we should do? Peter responds like this. He says, repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. The promise that Jesus makes of being empowered by the Holy Spirit is first fulfilled on the day of Pentecost and continues to be offered and fulfilled for everyone who follows Jesus, including us today. Now, as the story of the early church carries on through Acts, uh, we find this story in Acts 3. Peter and John are walking into the temple through the beautiful gate and they come across a beggar, a man who has been lame from birth. He's never been able to walk. He sees them and he asks them for money, but he won't even look at them. He looks away and he just sticks his hand out like this to ask for money. Peter says, look at me. So he looks and he's probably expecting something similar to what he gets off everybody else that comes past. It gives him a little bit. This is what Peter says. He says, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And he stands up. The Bible actually says he, he gets up and starts leaping and praising God. Again, there's a crowd and they're amazed by this, as you, as you understandably would be. And Peter looks at them and he says, why are you surprised? It's not as if I've done this in my own power. It's an incredible moment where the kingdom of God breaks into the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. The same power that us as followers of Jesus today are offered. What I love about this story is the, the bit where Peter says silver and gold, I do not have. See, how easy is it for us to look at the world and our situations, uh, people around us and go, I've got nothing to offer here. Sorry, there's a lot we can't do at the moment, isn't there? But Peter doesn't focus on what he can't offer, what he can't do, but on what he can. See, I wonder sometimes as well, would this story have been any different if Peter hadn't forgotten his wallet that day? See, I think we can find ourselves in situations like this and, and our response is silver or gold, I've, I've got a bit of, here you go. The guy had been handed money like that all his life. Peter could have just done that. It would have made a bit of a difference. Maybe be able to buy food for the day or, or shelter for the night. It would have made a, a bit of a difference. But the power of the Holy Spirit changed everything. There's nothing wrong with giving and, and generosity. But the thing is, is, is anyone can do that. And if that's all we ever do, then we miss the opportunity for the kingdom of God to break in, for the power of the Holy Spirit to move. We don't want to miss those opportunities. John Wimber, who is this remarkable church leader from the, the last century, famously talks about how we could take the power of the Holy Spirit out of the church and 95% of the stuff that we do would carry on. We might not even notice. The songs would still get sung. The books would still get read. The food would, would still 
get distributed. We might still have a little bit of an impact. But here's my question. Why would we want to do that? Why would we want anything less than absolutely everything that the God who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ever ask or imagine through his power at work in us has to offer? Don't answer that in the comments, by the way, because we, we aren't meant to. When Jesus promised the Holy Spirit, he immediately tasks us, you will be my witnesses. We can look at the world and its problems and we can kind of shrink back because we don't think that we can do anything about it. We don't have the silver or gold or we've only got a little bit of it. Or we can look at the world and give you what we have got to see the kingdom of God break in. Because don't you think the world needs that? I mean, it's always needed that, but right now, more than ever, don't you think the world needs the kingdom of God, that kingdom of hope, that kingdom of justice, that kingdom of peace to break in? Let's live out that value of being empowered by the Holy Spirit. Look at the world and not say, I don't have anything to give. Not say, this is what I've got, this little bit that I can give. Let's look at the world and say, this is what I have got to give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So how do we get it? How do we get there? Well, it seems to me there are two things that we need to be about. We need to be about presence and we need to be about purpose. I want to quote John Wimber again. He says this. He says, we don't seek God's power. We seek his presence. His power and everything else we need is found in his presence. Don't seek God for his power. Seek his presence. Think back to those disciples. They spent 10 days huddled together in prayer. If you want to get into the presence of God, there is no better way to do that than in prayer. Worship as well. Read the word get into his presence. Let me give you some advice on seeking the presence of God from an ancient, a really good old hymn. I'm not going to sing it, don't worry, but the words go like this. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Seek his presence. The second thing is his purpose. When Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, what he says is that the Holy Spirit is going to come and then you will be my witnesses. There is a task to this. If you want to see the Holy Spirit move, you've got to be willing to take on that great commission. You've got to be willing to go out there and share it. If you want to see the power of the Holy Spirit, you've got to be willing to fulfill the great commission and take it to the world. That's when we see the power of the Holy Spirit move. So here's what I want to do. I want to I want to pray for us. And if you're watching this this morning and you're not a follower of Jesus and you don't know what this power is all about, but you want to and you want to become a follower of Jesus, there's no better time than right now. Send us a message. Just say yes. Say something in the comments and we'll get in touch and we'll pray with you and we'll we'll, we'll take you through that because there is nothing better than following Jesus. Maybe you already are a follower of Jesus and you don't know what this power that I'm talking about is all about, but you want to. I'm going to pray for us in a minute. Maybe you are a follower of Jesus and you know what all of this is about and you just want to see more of it. I'm going to pray for us in a minute. And what I'm going to do is, and you can pray along with me with this, I'm just going to pray over us the words of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him, who is able to do immeasurably more, that we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.
thank you, Mike. That has just been so good, uh, hasn't it, to uh, hear about God's purpose and just living in God's presence and what that means, what that looks like for us. And so encouraging that um, we can step out in that. Um, we don't have to, to wait for that we can, because it's God's resources that are uh, available to us. If you have um, listened today and you just know that you need that relationship with Jesus, I encourage you just put yes. Sometimes there's that little bit of a battle, isn't there? But you know that, that God uh, is, is speaking to you. Then please just put yes uh, into the comments and someone will get in touch with you um, and to pray with you and to, to talk to you further about your decision to invite Jesus into your life. It's been fantastic to, to be with you and um, it's be, uh, please be encouraged as you go out into this week and know that, that God is with you, know that you can live in his presence, that, that God wants to 24 seven um, share life with you. Uh, so have a blessed week and thank you for uh, joining us on Kings Anywhere. Bye.